Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Cortex Tutorials. Today, I'm happy to introduce a frequently requested feature now available with Cortex version 2.3, our Modbus slave interface. If you wish to control your robot using a PLC or another type of Modbus master, in the next few minutes I will go over the interface control document and run an example from a soft PLC using PyModbus. If you are not familiar with Modbus and do not need to use this protocol for your application, then I recommend following our guides to use either our Python or C++ APIs, which will allow you to benefit from the full library of features available on your robot. OK, so before I jump into the ICD, let me specify that all the files I'll be presenting here, you can have access to simply by pulling the most recent version of the master branch of the Cortex repository available on GitHub. So starting with the ICD, here you can see the data formatting. So the byte order is big endian, and the word order is little endian. Then you have a list of discrete inputs here. So those are all statuses flags for the robot. This is where you'd get the state of the robot if any of the faults or warnings were triggered. If you already are familiar with Modbus, then you already know how to read those tables. But basically, if any of the flags at these addresses, so for example, if the address 45, the flags is raised, then it means that the robot is currently has a fault, which is the maximum current was reached. It's as simple as that. So all of those are read only. It's just the robot giving you feedback on its own state. Moving on, you have access to a, a few coils that you can read and write. So you can send a quick stop, a manual stop, or a fault reset. So the fault reset here is simply the usual clear fault that we have on the regular API. Uh, the quick stop is a pause on the robot, so it will interrupt the motion without triggering a fault. And the manual stop will trigger a fault, which will require a fault reset in order to resume your activities. Then we have all the input registers. Uh, many of them are read-only. So first, you can read the robot state. So these are the usual values for the robot state. You have access to all the fault flags. So these contain the same kind of information as the flags above here, except you have access to those in the register. Uh, plus, you have access to arm current, arm voltage, the CPU temperature, and arm ambient temperature. So this allows you to get a little bit more detailed information on the status of your robot. You also have access to all the joints data. So this is all the information that you would get if you were to use the refresh feedback fun function from our API. So you have access to the position, the velocity, the torque, the current, and the temperature for every single joint on the robot at these addresses. You can also get the rest of the information from the refresh feedback function, so everything related to the Cartesian information and the tool center point in these addresses. So these include the position, the orientation, velocity, and the force, everything related to the end effector. You have access to the information from addresses 104 to 139. Then we have holding registers. So those, uh, some of them are labeled read-only. This doesn't actually prevent you from writing in them, but know that if you input anything in a read-only uh, register, then it won't be interpreted. So first, you have the control. So yeah, with 0, 1, 2, you can see if the status of the robot was a quick stop, an abort, or fault reset. You can get the feedback or the notifications for the progress of actions and sequences the same way you would with the API, except in these registers, uh, 100, 101, and 102, you can see if your status is started, completed, paused, or aborted. And you can see uh, what the ID of your action is, as well as the type of move you are currently doing. Here, you can also access the current uh, linear and angular Cartesian speed limits. Those are the values that you would be setting if you were to modify them using the global setters on the web app, for example. And finally, this is where the interesting stuff happens. So you can uh, read and write inside those registers to be able to create new actions or launch existing ones. So one thing to specify is that currently, uh, the only type of commands you can send through Modbus are twist commands and Cartesian trajectories or pre-existing sequences that are already saved on your database, which you might have created 
through the web app, for example. So you can use the addresses 200 to 219. You can fill all of the registers here. And once you uh, send the command to start your action, then the robot will progress. And you can monitor the status of your sequence using those registers over here to be able to go through any arbitrary complex program that you may want to run. And th that's all there is to know, just to be able to launch your first initial pick and place application, for example, using our Modbus interface. So now that we're familiar with the ICD, let's move on to the example. First step is to look at the readme here, which tells us that to install the required packages, we can simply use pip install dash r requirements.txt. And that will install all the packages that you need, uh, including PyModBus. So know that if you're using a PLC, of course, this is not uh, required. This is only the installation of the packages required to run the PyModBus example that we have here. So I will not go into too much detail on this example. Uh, the first thing I want to uh, highlight is that uh, you can create a Modbus TCP client with PyModBus by connecting to the regular IP address of your robot and port 502 and connect to it using client.connect. Then another thing I want to highlight is that uh, most of the feedback and commands sent to the robot are actually on the form of floats, while our registers uh, contain 16 bits and floats contain 32, which means you will need to write functions like these ones we have over here to be able to read or write a single float into two registers. So you can either use directly those methods or you can write them yourselves, and this should facilitate everything. The rest of the logic, as you will see, is very, very similar to our regular API. So all you have to do, uh, you can create a few helpers, which will help you uh, write the structures for your TCP commands, for example, for uh, Cartesian trajectories. And eventually, once you launch the, uh, the register to start actions, then in the background, the execute action uh, API call is called, and everything is running as you would expect with a regular API example. So let me set up my robot, and we'll see how this example runs uh, in live on the robot. OK, so as you will see, this example is fairly short. Let's start it using Python 01 autocomplete. First, we fetch the feedback from the robot. Then we send the robot to the first position. You can see we get the notifications when the actions are done. We can send a second position, and then we reach. And that's all for the example. Thank you for watching. If you have missed it, check out our video on waypoints and other new features from Cortex 2.3, which allows multiple points to be chained without having to stop the robot. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel to be notified with the latest news and when we release future Cortex tutorials.